Hello, lovely internet strangers. In this installment of The Eighth Square's Corner, I'm going to ramble about Jessica Jones. Some of you may be familiar with the TV show, some of you may have even watched the TV show, but my guess is that there will be less of you that have read the original comics, which were called Alias, referring to Alias Investigations, the name for Jessica Jones' private eye business. I own all the comics. When I started collecting them, it was 2015. I went to New York Comic Con with my family, like I had been doing for the past couple of years before that, and Marvel let the audience watch the entire pilot of Jessica Jones during the panel. And I had never read the comics at that point, but I got really hyped for the show, and my father was familiar with the comics, so he encouraged me to go read them. So I tracked them all down. After the show, they released them in new collections, but at the time it was a little bit harder to do, and it was a little bit tricky to find this one single issue which did not make it into the collections for whatever reason. So I have them all here. The first collection does issues 1 through 9, then there's a single issue number 10, this one does 11 through 15, and this one does 16 through 28. After the show came out, the comics continued under the name Jessica Jones instead of Alias, and I have read some of those but not all. But I probably won't continue reading the newer stuff because the original creator, Brian Michael Bendis, left, and I'm not really interested in interpretations of the character done by someone other than him. I haven't looked into it, but I'm afraid that whoever they would bring on would have some sort of feminist agenda about the whole character, which I'm just not really in the mood for. So like I said, I was really excited to watch the show after having seen the pilot. So after I gathered the comics, I went and read all of them and I was even more excited to watch the show than I had been just from the pilot. But then I actually watched the show. Or should I say I watched part of the show. During my first attempt at watching Jessica Jones, I made it four episodes into the first season until I just didn't want to continue. And then I gave it another try, I think, after I had made it through season two of Daredevil. And that time I made it through episode eight. So I've seen the first eight episodes of the first season of Jessica Jones on Netflix. And I'm really not interested in making a third attempt. And after reading episode descriptions from the rest of season one and from season two and three, I feel very validated in that decision. So why, after my initial excitement, was I not interested in continuing Jessica Jones? Honestly, in my opinion, as someone who's read the comics, it is almost an in-name only adaptation. And to prep for this video, I basically just flipped back through all the comics, and the comics have even less in common with the show than I had remembered off the top of my head. So warning, there's going to be minor spoilers for the show, but major spoilers for the comics. I'm going to talk about what they have in common and then the differences and why I think that the comics are a vastly superior product to the show. Really the only things that the comics and the show have in common is that the main character is named Jessica Jones. She is a private investigator who has superpowers and she used to be a superhero who was not an Avenger but ran with the Avengers and she left that behind to become a private investigator and she lives in Hell's Kitchen and she has a thing with Luke Cage and because of what happened to her in the past. She's kind of fucked up. She drinks too much, smokes too much, makes questionable life choices, and has an overall attitude of bitchiness, pushes people away. Rough around the edges is kind of understating it. In my opinion, those are really the only things that the show and the comics have in common. Otherwise, the way the character looks is different, the plot lines are completely different, and the focus, the message, the intent of the comics versus the TV show are very different. For just a little context, the Alias comics came out in 2001 as part of Marvel Max line, where they publish comics where you could say fuck and overall show more graphic content, including sexual content. So Brian Michael Bendis invented this character who existed within the Marvel Universe, who was Avengers adjacent, but not part of the Avengers, and invented this whole backstory for the character. A large part of the reason that the show is very different from the comics, as far as I'm aware, is because of the licensing issues around the various superheroes that are featured in the comics. Most of them belong to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, not Marvel's television universe universe. For example, Carol Danvers is her best friend in the comics, and in the show they have to replace her with Trish Walker because we can't have Captain Marvel in our TV show, that's part of the movies. In my opinion, if they were going to make the show, they should have found a way to make all the licensing work because the whole point of the book is to almost dissect what it takes to be a superhero, the fanaticism some people have towards superheroes, the hatred other people have towards superheroes, the distrust of them. People are always asking her why she gave up being a superhero, 
hero, why she doesn't wear the costume anymore. It examines her relationship to those bigger name superheroes when she has to interact with them or ask them for favors. The very first plot line in Jessica Jones involves her being set up where she ends up getting a videotape of Captain America's secret identity because he's friends with the president and some powerful people need to get at the president. And also they thought they'd be helping her out at the same time because she has this reputation because of her past and the way she had changed that she was this down on her luck loser ex-superhero who was hard up for money. So whether she sold the tape for money or gave it to the cops to get out of a jam, it would be fined by these rich, powerful people. At the end of that plot line, Captain America or Steve Rogers comes to thank her and he asks her why she stopped being a superhero. And she says, well, because it became very clear that I could never be you, any of you. I just, I didn't have what it took. I didn't have that thing. And he says, thing? And she says, that thing that inspires people to be, I don't know, better than they are, that thing. And he says, I've met a million people in my life and I honestly can't think of three who would have done this for me. What you did, you protected me when I needed it most. You did it. And that's, hey, that's the stuff. So what I'm saying is maybe you're being a little hard on yourself, huh? So you get that moment where he tells her that, hey, the fact that you didn't expose me, even though you were being pressured by really powerful people, that is heroic. And it says everything about your character. The Alias comics were always about Jessica Jones helping the little people, so to speak. The people of the Avengers are too busy to help because their problems are related to superpowers, but just too small potatoes. And one of the things that, as far as I'm aware, is missing from the television show is how Jessica helps teenage girls with superpowers. Jessica helps two different teenage girls with powers, one of whom is Maddie Franklin, who's the new Spider-Woman, and Jessica Drew, the original Spider-Woman, shows up, someone else who's missing from the TV show. And that was a really important part of the emotional core of the comics because Jessica herself lost her family in the accident that gave her her powers, and she always felt like a misfit, and then she was adopted. And so I think in a way, it's like healing for her to help these girls that are kind of in the same situation that she was in. There's also this neighbor kid, Malcolm, this teenager who's like a super fan of hers, who keeps trying to get himself a job as her assistant. And he does end up helping her on a case at one point because he knows someone who knows one of the missing girls. In the show, there's a character named Malcolm, but he's an adult and someone who's manipulated by Kilgrave. And as far as I can tell, has no real relation or resemblance to the character in the comics. In name only. Like I mentioned, the comics also explore the kind of cult of celebrity around superheroes. And she ends up investigating a guy who's essentially pretending to be a minor superhero. And she ends up having a conversation with this therapist whose wife has hired her to investigate him and asks him how this guy is so convincing, why all these people believe him. And the therapist basically tells her that people want the excitement. They want to know someone who's famous and they want to believe it. So they do. So let's talk about Kilgrave, aka the Purple Man. If you've seen Jessica Jones, the TV show, or if you're even familiar with the TV show in passing, probably what stands out is Kilgrave, the Purple Man, as played by David Tennant. They couldn't get basically any of the characters that are in the actual comics. So because of the licensing issues and because they cast David Tennant as Kilgrave, I think they just felt like Kilgrave is going to be the major plot line and the focus of this entire show. Even though in the comics, you literally only hear about Kilgrave for the first time in issue 24 out of 28. And it isn't until the next issue, 25, where you start to get the story. And basically she just tells the story to Luke Cage. It's very quick. And the reason that it comes up, the reason that she's telling the story in the first place is because a bunch of families of people who were killed or manipulated by Kilgrave come to her for help because he never confessed to these crimes, even though he confessed to different ones and they want closure and they want her to go talk to Kilgrave and get him to confess because they were told by Carol Danvers, her BFF, who she's been kind of estranged from, that Jessica can help them. And so she tells Luke Cage the story and then she decides to go talk to Kilgrave, who's in high security superhero prison, basically. And then he somehow escapes very quickly and starts trying to wreak havoc on the streets. He's a very weird character. He basically starts breaking the fourth wall and talking about the fact that they're in a comic and everyone just says, oh, he's just like insane. Like he makes meta commentary on the comic itself, making fun of the fact that Jessica Jones is like this retconned character who was never in any issues or anything that you'll see with the Avengers in the past, but they just retcon all this stuff for her and kind of write her into it. And so he makes fun of that. And then 
and he makes fun of like superheroes in general and how he needs to make a big spectacle. Otherwise the Avengers aren't gonna pay attention, which kind of ties into the whole arc of the comics about how Jessica Jones fills in the gaps because the Avengers only come when there's some big kind of like end of the world kind of thing. But basically she's saved by Jean Grey because in the past Jean Grey put like this safety trigger in her mind so she can never be manipulated by Kilgrave again. So like I said, you don't even hear the name Kilgrave or anything alluding to him until issue 24. And what you discover when she's telling Luke Cage the story is that part of the reason that she stopped being a superhero is because of what happened to her while she was under Kilgrave's control. He basically mind controlled her into believing that she was in love with him, but he never touched her. He made her beg for sex and watch while he had sex with other women that he would grab off the street and he was verbally emotionally abusive to her insulting her all the time and then he ordered her to go kill daredevil she's stopped by all the avengers she goes into a coma jean gray helps her out with the trigger that will prevent further compulsion and then they want her to come back as jewel that was her alter ego and she says nah i'm done with that so all that you know up to that point for 23 issues is that for some reason she left the superhero life behind clearly some Something happened that fucked her up and she has moments here and there where she reveals things about the way she feels about herself, the way she feels about life and being a superhero. Clearly something happened until all of a sudden in issue 24 the name Kilgrave is spoken and then in issue 25 you get the backstory dump basically. But in the show it's all about Kilgrave. It's the Kilgrave show. The first episode he's in there. She's got like PTSD. She's like plagued by these flashbacks. None of that happens in the comics. The comics are about Jessica Jones and who she is and about the world of superheroes and what it's like when you're not one of the top tier superheroes. The show is like this feminist statement, I guess. Like the cinematography is great, the soundtrack is great, and they did a really great shot for shot adaptation of the first scene in the comics where she throws her uncooperative client through the glass window in her door. But other than that, it quickly goes off the rails to be like this whole thing about Kilgrave. And the other reason that that happened, I think, is because in modern television shows, there always has to be this like epic arc that we have to be chasing. And also with these Netflix Marvel shows, they almost film them more like it's a 13 hour movie. So you just watch an hour at a time, but really it's just like this long nebulous mass. I can't say if Veronica Mars is a spiritual successor to Alias because the Alias comics only came out in 2001 and Veronica Mars the TV show came out in 2004, right when Alias was wrapping up. I have no idea if the show creator read the Alias comics or not because at that time you actually had to be a fan of comics to know what Alias Investigations was all about. But Veronica Mars is also a female character who used to have a different life. Something traumatic happened to her. She was kind of forced to leave it behind, but also made that choice herself. Becomes a private investigator. For her, it's because her dad became a private investigator because she's a teenager, but she channels the bad things that happened to her in the past into helping people and into finding the answers that she's looking for into seeking some kind of justice. So it's not identical to Alias but it's similar. They're both noir. They show the seedy underbellies of the communities that they run in. In Alias, you learn that even the heroes' shining capes have a little bit of tarnish on them. But one of the great things about Veronica Mars is that even though it does have a season-long arc, you get all of these mysteries of the week and the episodes are structured like a TV show should be structured in acts. Jessica Jones also has to bring these other characters to fill in because like I said, they basically couldn't get any of the actual characters from the comics because of licensing. Literally the only character that is in the comics besides Jessica Jones that is in the TV show, as far as I can remember, is Luke Cage. So they bring in Hogarth, who was a male character from the comics and they gender swapped for no real fucking reason. And I honestly hated Hogarth and Hogarth became a big part of the show. And as far as I can tell, continued to be a big part of the show. And I just had, zero interest whenever Hogarth was on screen. And also over time, I started to really sour on the casting of Jessica. I know to a certain extent you wanna focus on casting someone who can convey the personality of the character, but I feel like Jessica's looks are actually important. The part of what I liked about her in the comics is the way that she is drawn. They show a photo of her when she was in her superhero costume and she's got pink hair and she's got the tight outfit that's form-fitting and she's wearing all the makeup, but present day Jessica in the comics doesn't style her hair, basically wears a white tank top, baggy jeans, and a really baggy jacket. Like you cannot see this woman's body. And she always has a scowl and she's just kind of more built 
than the actress who they picked in the TV show, Kristen Ritter. The actress has this almost like elfish kind of face. She's very slight. Her face is very delicate in its features. And I'll try to put a picture on screen of what Jessica looks like in the comics. And I will also put a picture of an actress who I think would have been a good pick to play Jessica from both a physical perspective and a personality perspective. I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but she's the actress who played Tamsin in the TV show Lost Girl. She is a Valkyrie who's really badass. I honestly feel like feminists should be a little annoyed at the very least about the casting of Jessica Jones because they're always on about how, oh, all people care about is the way women look, they have to be pretty, etc, etc. And in the comics, she's a very average looking, normal looking woman, not the skinny mini elfish face Hollywood type that Kristen Ritter is. And there's a million actresses in Hollywood, they could have cast anyone, they could definitely have found someone who looked more of the part and could do the character, and they didn't. There's even more stuff that I didn't talk about, there's J. Jonah Jameson makes an appearance. Clay Quartermain from S.H.I.E.L.D. is in there. The Scott Lang Ant-Man is in there. They also, from what I remember, do not have Matt Murdock in the show at all, even though Daredevil and Matt Murdock are part of the Marvel TV universe. And he definitely features in the comics. He's sent by Luke Cage to bail her out of a jam and functions as her lawyer. And he also hires her to do some bodyguard work for Matt Murdock because his Daredevil identity is still secret at that point. And flipping back through it, I was further reminded of how much I actually really like Jessica, that the point of the comics is Jessica herself. She is the selling point, her character, who she is, like the quote I shared from Captain America telling her that she demonstrated to him strength of character. And the Jessica in the TV show, at least in the first eight episodes, I just didn't find that there was much to her to like or grab onto. They just made it so much about her trauma. I also really like that Luke Cage calls her out in a way that I definitely don't think they would let you do in current year, where she's mad at him and he's like, hey, you came to my bar, you got hammered, you came on to me. We were two consenting adults. You know what you were doing. Maybe you have regrets, whatever, but that's not my problem. And when she tries to ask him who was in his bed when she came over the other night, he's like, do you want to be my girlfriend? Do you want to get married? No. Okay. Then it's none of your business. In the show, they make it this really fucked up thing from what I remember, where when Jessica was under Kilgrave's control, he compelled her to kill Luke Cage's wife. And none of that is in the comics. The only fucked up thing Jessica actually did under Kilgrave's control was try to kill Daredevil, but in her confusion, end up punching the Scarlet Witch and then getting taken down by the Avengers. She had shame about it, but she didn't kill anyone. But from what I could tell, the show just wanted to make it this whole thing about trauma and all the write-ups about the show were all about how feminist it was. They set up Kilgrave as this manipulative symbol of the patriarchy, basically, this evil man who took away her agency. And I was just like, oh my God, you took away Jessica's agency to be the star and the focal point of her own fucking show. Anyway, I could go on and on about this topic, but the point is that the Alias comics are amazing and you should read them. And you now know why I tried to watch Jessica Jones, the TV show. And after two attempts, just could not subject myself to it further. I really just didn't find anything there that I enjoyed. Thank you for listening to this rant. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And I will have more content for you very soon.